we all know that we are in, in that season of the year. The season of Easter. It means a rising up or a standing up again. Praise God. Amen. Anastasis. A rising or standing up again. And I've always said this many times. I thank God that we, have, we serve a God of restoration. There are things men cannot do for you because it's too bad. It's too late. It's too hopeless. One of those things is dead. One of the things that a lot of men, but when you come to death, in fact, the Bible calls him the ultimate enemy. Praise God. May we thank God because we serve a God that can rise up anything. Can I hear men to that? I don't know what is it in your life that are dealing with that men have written up and said cannot be done. Yes, with men. Praise God. But as we consider and we get into this month of resurrection, this month of anastasis, we are believing that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can raise any dead thing in your life in the name of Jesus. The same power. So the word means a rising up, a standing up. And this morning we'll be looking at the power of anastasis. The power behind anastasis. Praise God. I, I believe that there are dimensions of God's power uh, that we do not know yet as Christians. Even though God is God, He has various dimensions of His power. Amen. There are levels of God's power we do not know. What we know today of God's power is in part. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 9 to 12, quickly. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 to 12. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 9 to 12. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. I taught as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Praise God. I am saying that there are dimensions of God's power, even though He be God, that we do not know or may never know on this side of eternity. We know what God can do, but there are things God can do that our mind cannot yet comprehend. He has not entered our mind. Praise God. You know why? Because of relationship. Lucifer was one that knew God closely enough. Being one of the children that covers the throne of God. That's why the Bible called me a believer in James 2 verse 19. The Bible said the devil also believed not only that, but he trembles. Why? Because he knows this God. Bless God. So Paul introduced the power that raises Christ from the dead as the ultimate power of God. This is God at his best. Resurrection power is God at his best. There is nothing more can God can add to when it comes to his power made manifest. That's why this is the ultimate of our Christianity. In fact, Easter, properly understood, is more important than Christmas. This is the cornerstone of the Christianity. Praise God. Now he's saying that everything God ever did, from creating the heavens and the earth, Adam and Eve fighting Lucifer in heaven, though he really wasn't fighting Lucifer. The Bible says, I behold, Satan fall. I mean, God is too big to fight Lucifer. Can I hear men to that? It was a contest between Lucifer and Michael and some other, Michael and some other angel. But all, dividing, one of the greatest miracles of the Old Testament was the dividing of the Red Sea. But Paul says nothing of this can be compared to the power of resurrection. No wonder the psalmist writing in Psalm 8 verse 3. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, implying not much power was involved. When I consider that the heavens, the works of thy fingers. You know, there's how much a finger can do. Praise God. Praise God. We are going to look at our text in Ephesians chapter 1. And see what Paul was passing to us concerning the power of God. We know this Paul. The Bible makes us understand that he was a lawyer. Learned under Gamaliel, the extreme 
Jewish law teacher. Paul, the writer of the New Testament, most of the New Testament. Paul, the eloquent. In Acts chapter 26, verse 28, defending his faith before King Agrippa. The, the Bible says, the king came to point of saying, because of your speech, I almost became a Christian. Thou almost persuaded me to be a Christian. That means he was doing a good job of being able to pass on the message of his salvation. But this same Paul, when he came to point to find this power of God, he was at loss. Praise God. When it came to Paul telling us about the, being able to quantify the power of God, he didn't know how to go about it. The same learned Paul, the same eloquent Paul, the same Paul that wrote most of the New Testament, when it was time to be able to say, this is what I'm talking about, he could not. He has to synthesize or put together some words to express what he had in his mind. To describe the power of Anastasis. And we will do well. God help us to see what he wrote. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. Can we all turn to it? There are two words he put together. The Ephesians 1 verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Let's understand this. The word exceeding here in Greek is hyperbola. It means to throw beyond the usual mark. To throw beyond a target. Praise God. It means if there is a mark set, the power of God exceeds it. It's just him trying to explain. Uh, in, to our mind, it's hard to put it together, but this is Paul struggling to express this power of God. He used the phrase exceeding greatness. It looks like reputation. But the Bible says that it's like if there is any power, if you can imagine any power, be it in sciences, be it in technology, the best of it, even the power of the enemy, even the power of the future, political, name it, nothing could become, they say the power of God exceeds this power. Praise God. Hugh Pablo. To throw beyond the target. It's like saying, well, this is how far you run. This power exceeds the target. It was Paul's way of explaining what he couldn't really explain. Then the second word used here is greatness. Magnitude. Implies the magnitude, the greatness of his power. Praise God. Paul is saying that I'm trying to put what together to let you know or have an idea of this power of God. And to say that there is no power you can imagine, there's no power you can conceive that God's power does not exceed. Can you imagine how embarrassing it is when Christians like you and I are scared of witches? Scared of what a man can do to you. Scared of what might become of you tomorrow. We are, the reason is because we, we ha, don't have an idea of what we carry. Because this is really meant for us in the long run. So Paul trying to put it together, he used words like this. Exceeding greatness of his power. That means if there is any power you know, oh, money, name it. If there is any power you ever know, witchcraft. There are powers. Let's not deceive ourselves. Are we together? But it, Paul is saying that if there is anything you know in sciences, in technology, Demonic power, political power, the power of God does not only meet, it passes it. It exceeds. And the exceeding greatness of his power, praise God. The exceeding greatness of his power. That is any power conceivable. God's power that he used to raise Christ from the dead, which we are going to look into, is more than it. Praise God. This is God at his best. Beyond this power, there's nothing else God can offer. Are we together? This is the ultimate manifestation of God's power, the power of resurrection. Praise God. Now, when it comes to describing power in the Bible, especially in the, in the, in the Greek New Testament, there are five words involved, but I'm going to stay on three today that Paul uses in his writing. Amen? Let's go back again to Ephesians 1 verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? 
That word here is dynamis. It's power. Dynamis. It talks about the ability of God, the abundance of God, the might of God. What God can do potentially. Dynamis. What is the exceeding greatness of his power? This is the power of God essentially in a state of rest. Are we together? It's the power of God, the ability of God, what God can do in a state of inertia. So Paul writes and says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power? The word there is dynamis. Praise God. But I want to emphasize here again that this is power at rest. Amen? It's power at rest. I asked David if he can pull it up to put up this um, diagram of a, a rocket. You know? Thank you. This is what we see like a, this is more of a space shuttle. Praise God. At the bottom of, of that diagram is what really makes this space shuttle what it is. Praise God. Space shuttle will never leave it and go to anywhere. In spite of all what it can do, hear me? All the power that it carries potentially. It will never be able to leave it until that thing at the bottom is ignited. Praise God. The gas. Now, in most special shuttle, I think they use fluid gas. There are some that use uh, solid gas, but this is uh, fluid gases. Until that thing is set in motion, no matter how far this, this rocket, because that's what it is, it's called special shuttle, can go to any, it can leave the Earth atmosphere. Are we together? But until that thing can sit, most cases, I think in somewhere in Florida, right? They do most of the launching. Florida. He can sit there for months in spite of his potential. Hear me? In spite of his ability, he can sit there for months until he's ignited, activated. Praise God. So Paul says that what is the greatness of his power potentially? Dynamis. The ability of God. Paul was trying to, I don't know where he got his I don't know where God is leading from, but I see the mind of someone that seems to have an idea of sciences. Praise God. The power of God at rest, just like this rocket. The power of God at initial, dynamis. Praise God. What is the exceeding greatness of His power? Verse 19. What is the exceeding greatness of His power to us what who believe? According to the walking, that's the next word I want us to look at, the word walking. It means energy. Energia, that's where we have the word energy. Or to exercise. Dynamis will still be dynamis without energy involved. The rocket will still be a rocket with all its potential to go to anywhere without being activated. So the power of God at rest is of no use without the next dimension of God's power, which is the working of God's power. The and energy, the energy, the efficiency. It is the working of God's power that set the power of God into oppression. Are we together? I hope I'm not losing you. <laughs> Praise God. We will get this together. We will get it. Amen. So Paul in his writing trying to explain the power of God used this word. Amen. And the last one here is the, in the same verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who, who believe according to the working of his mighty power. The word there is kratos. That is power of God made manifest or visible. Let's go back to that special. That special will sit on the pad for months, even for years. But that same special can go to the moon. I don't, I mean, they've not been tried yet. But it can leave the earth atmosphere and fly many kilometers or miles. But as long as that special sit in somewhere in Florida or Houston, where they have the launching pad, it is of no use. It's potentially able to do great things. Are we together? So Paul is saying that the power of God can be described, first of all, as dynamis. Power at rest. Power at rest. But until there is activation, until there is energy applied, there is no manifestation, Kratos. Of God's power. Is that simple enough? Are we together? Are we together? Until 
there is activation just like this special. There is no manifestation of what this special can do. So he has described essentially three aspects of God's power here. Dynamis and nature and crutches. So what Paul is saying in summary is that the power of God made visible is only possible when energy is exercised towards dynamics. Let me say it again. The power of God made manifest, the crutches, is only possible when energy is exercised towards dynamics. Praise God. These three things. That is to say, the blind man come to this church, for example. That man will remain blind even though dynamis is present. Are we together? Yeah, this will help us. The blind man come to this church, he's blind. A dead man come to this church, he's dead. Christian, do you accept that there's God's power in the church to heal the sick? Are we? Do you accept? So the man coming through your church, we do all the singing. We believe that the power of God is present. The Bible says, two or three are gathered in his name. The Holy Ghost, which is the power of the Godhead. Mary said, how shall this thing be? He said, the Holy Ghost, the power of the Godhead. What makes God able? What makes God God? I've said before, you ever catch God and said, God, what is it in you that makes you God? He will say, it's the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Ghost is present because we are here and he's here with us. But do not miss present in the house will be of no use until we use faith. I will come to it. Even though I'm, I'm talking about power today. Until we use faith to acti activate dynamis. And give a word of command in the name of Jesus be healed. Until we do it. That man will still be blind and dynamis will still be in the house. Are we together? So what makes dynamis? Paul writing. Leave the point of being at rest to a point of crutches being made manifest is the in-between two powers and nature. Faith. And that's what is missing commonly in church. Luke. Book of Luke chapter 5, verse 17 to 26. Luke chapter 5, from verse 17 to 26. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. That is dynamis. Are we together? Hallelujah. Dynamis was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed with a man which was taken with a palsy. That's a disease condition. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before Jesus. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, the press, they went upon the roof, move on, house top, and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he, Jesus, saw their faith, he said unto them, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees, this is by the way, began to reason, saying, Who is this that can now forgive sin? He speaketh blasphemy. Who can forgive sin but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thought, he asked me, he asked me, said unto them, What reason he in your heart? Whether it's easier to say, Thy sin be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that he may know that the Son of Man had power, hallelujah, upon the earth to forgive sin, he said unto them, or to the sick man or palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy couch and go into thy house. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, What we have seen a strange thing today. Praise God. They have seen a strange thing today. What was that strange thing? Kratos, the power of God made manifest. But let's look at, let's, let's reason this. The Bible said this man was sick. He came to the church. He had a condition called palsy. Amen. And that the power of God was present to heal. Dunamis was in the house. Praise God. 
The power of, I want us to understand the working of this resurrection power. Because here we come, Easter is around the corner and we all go to the same thing. But let's have some understanding. Dunamis was present in the house to heal. And just like he's present in many of our churches today. Because God is faithful. If the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. The Holy Ghost is there. That's the power of God's presence. Are we together? The Bible said the power of God was present in the house to heal. And there were many in the, in the house that day. There were doctors, there were lawyers, there were learned people that knew a lot of stuff, just like some of us knew a lot of Bible. <laughs> but yet the power of God was present to heal. But these lay men, these common men that had faith, they were coming through the door, but because of the number of people in the house, they couldn't pass through the door. They went through the roof. And when Jesus saw the, their energy, are we together? When Jesus saw their faith, praise God. That's the second aspect of the power of God. When Jesus saw their energy, when I say he saw their faith, he began to speak. You know why many things, many times you come to church and church seems to be dormant, even the power of God is present? You know the absent? Faith. Just like that rocket we saw. That rocket can be on that pad, that's what they call it, for years. Until there's activation to set in motion the fuel that will set it and take it to any way. The Bible says, as they were there, Jesus saw their faith and he began to speak. And Kratos, the power of God was made manifest. The man stood up from his bed. Church, I want to break, bring this home very simple. I'll talk about, I'll apply this to resurrection quickly. But I want to talk to us because I've Ask God a lot about this church. I've had the opportunity of coming here many times when all of you are gone. And look at this church, which is sometimes the life of many instances. And I've asked God, what is missing? Because I see potentially in this church great men of substance in the things of the Spirit, when it comes to money and all kinds of grace. But we seem so ordinary. I've asked God many times, what is missing from King's Fresh Church International? And the answer is still always the same. I am still God, potentially. My power is still present, potentially. There is dynamics all the time. Because you know that in this church we serve a living God, don't we? We don't do ministry for any reason but to please Him. I don't know about you. People do ministry for many reasons. They do ministry for money. I've shared in an instance of Balcom in Nigeria. We're going for this one year of service. A friend told me that she has two options of opening either a church or a nursery. I was wondering what's the relationship between church and nursery. He said they all bring money. I said, how does church bring money? He said, tight. <laughs> Some people do church that this, they will survive in America with church money. They will, they will make it to. They will buy cars. They will drive well. They will dress well. This is it. And every time they climb up here, they push that agenda. Every means. How many times do we do the collection here? Today we are going to be, we come to church, it's all about money, 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 money. It's, the, it's what they had in mind. But God knows that by His grace in this church, we have exalted the name of Jesus. We have believed God that many will come to sit and hear this same name we have. I know the power of God is here. The one, of the, one of the things that I believe we lack as a church, which God wants us to imbibe, is faith. Praise God. Jesus saw their faith. How? By what they did. You cannot tell me you are a believer and there's nothing you are doing with what you believe. Faith is acting on what you believe. Praise God. That rocker will sit on that part for years without activation. The power of God will be praised. How many people have people walk in here and say, I feel God's power? And I believe them. It's their potentially. But the reason it cannot affect us as a people is because we have not activated the power by our action. Praise God. The Bible says he saw their faith. Their faith compelled them, even though the door was all Build up with people. Their faith compelled them to go through the roof. That was abnormal. May God give us abnormal men and women of faith in this place in Jesus' name. It was not done. 
abnormal. We are so used to the conventional. Praise God. There are some dimensions of God you will never partake unless you are ready to step out of your boat of convenience and what you're used to. I'll say it again. There are some dimensions of God's power you'll never see until you're willing to step off your boat of, of what you are used to and try God. There is no guarantee for God's word until it's right. The Bible says he saw their faith. And that same man that would have come in, like he would go to many churches with his palsy and left with his palsy. Even though God's power was present, that same man that would have come into every church with his poverty and lived with his poverty, that same man would have come into any, any church and come with his health condition, his marital situation, and lived with the same condition. Even though dynamis was in the house, the power of God was present to heal whatever it was. The same resident power Paul was describing in Ephesians 1 verse 19. Present. That same power became manifest. They saw it. The doctors and the lawyers were screaming saying, we have never seen anything like this because God's power was made manifest. I want to challenge us. Every Christian, when was the last time you ever acted in faith? When was the last time you said, God, I'm doing this by faith? To challenge what is going on in my life. God will still be God. Do that means you still be in the house with all his potential, the fullness of his power, and you still be in life. When was the last time you ever acted in faith? Because the Bible said they just shall live by his faith. Be it done to you according to your faith. Anything done outside faith is a sin. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. When was the last time you as a Christian took a step of faith concerning your finances? I challenge people in this house, they're talking about marriage. Go and buy your wedding gown. Hang it up in your room. Say, what's going on, sister? I say, it's my wedding. You're believing God for a child? Go and buy toys. Praise God. Are we hearing ourselves? When was the last time you acted in faith? Because God's power, do not miss that can rest, the same power that rests Christ from the dead will still be present here. There is nothing God could add to his power. This is the ultimate manifestation of God's power, the resurrection power. But until it's activated, it's useless. Are we together? And that's the question in church. We come to church every day. Church has become a place of religious activity. Just like every other religion, we come to church, we pray, we sing, we dance, and we go home. And do that we'll be like, whoa, wow, and stay here. When was the last time you took a step of faith? I can count for myself. I don't know about you. I can count for myself. We are so deceived by the devil to believe that our becoming is by our effort. Please don't misunderstand me. I don't speak against hard work. No. When was the last time you acted in faith? Is your finances? You took some money and said, Lord, I want a change of story. I need this money, but I'm trusting you for a change of story. When was the last time? The Bible says Jesus saw their faith, and God being a faithful God began to speak some things, declare their healing. Listen to me. When it comes to the manifestation of God's power, the Bible says with God, all things are possible. There are some things, there are things that are impossible with man. But man with God. I'm saying that in most of the miracles you need, you have a role to play. There will still be lack in your house, there will still be need in your house, and God will still be, God with all this power made at, at, at rest. Are we together? Do not miss at rest. All at, and God will still be God. We know many instances. Sarah was there in the, I mean, was it, uh, Anna was there in the Bible, believing God for a child. Every day she would go to the same place, come out, go to the same place until she said, no, you go home. I want a change of story. What happened to God all these years? He was still God with all his dynamics in place. But until faith was exerted, nothing, was, nothing happened. Praise God. I challenge you, when you leave this place, ask yourself the question I'm asking you. When was the last time you acted in faith? 
So, Lord, I'm doing this because it's for faith. How does this apply to what really happened? The issue of Jesus being raised from the dead. When Jesus died, the powers that be, listen to me. I read, we'll get into this next week, but let me just say this. I heard a lot of people talk about how demons, you know, held Jesus in the grave and all that. They are too small. No. But when Jesus died, they instigated the killing of Jesus in Jerusalem. Praise God. First Corinthians 2. Let's look at this quickly. From verse 7 to 8. First Corinthians 2. From verse 7 to 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world into our glory, unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world, talking about demonic powers, knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So, powers that be, demonic power instigated the killing of Jesus in Jerusalem. And in their thinking, they are wondering, what will God do now? He's dead. Praise God. They have known the power of God, some dimension of God's power. Because dynamics at rest can never let you know what he can do. Are we together? Dynamics at rest. You can never tell the dimension of his manifestation until he's tried. Are we together? The power of God at rest cannot give an idea what he can do, except for it is applied. So they must that be the rejoicing that ah, we got it. We know what God can do. He has never done this before. What has not been done before we've done for you in Jesus' name? They are saying in your heart, God has never done this before. He has never had a son that went to the cross and died. Now he's dead. What will God do? What power will you use? We heard that he said three days be raised from the dead. Let's see. What did God do? The same dynamis, the same power of God. Praise God. The same power of God energized this time. Listen, I'll come to you by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. See, it's not about Christ being raised from the dead. We know that men have been raised from the dead before. Right? So what's the big deal about Easter? Have you ever asked yourself, Elijah raised men from the dead? Even Jesus himself raised Lazarus from the dead. So what is the big deal about his death? We will help, God will help us next we will look into it. It's not about, it's not about the, the fact that he was raised from the dead physically. That's a minor thing. It's the Lord that was in place. I'll talk more of this next week. Because God has made a law that the, sin, the soul that sinned that will do what? He shall die. That's the law. It's called the law of sin and death. Um, Romans 8. So now that God has placed that law in place, because Jesus died not as a sinner. He has become sin. Are we together? He died as sin, carrying our sin. It's one thing to be a sinner, but it's another thing to be called sin. He became sin for us, him that knew no sin. He became sin. So now the Bible says, the soul that sinner shall die. Now this one has sin. And he has every right to die. Now, what will God do? We'll discover next week. Because there's also a law called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. All in Romans chapter 8. But let's get back to our story here. So here, do not miss the same, the same power of God that we can never quantify what he can do if he's put to work. Because demons were like, we know what God can do. He has created the heavens and the earth. He's chased us out of heaven. He parted the Red Sea. But this one has never happened before. What will God do? The same old dynamis instigated this time by the Holy Spirit. Hebrews. Let's see it. Book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 13 to 14. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats, or of goats, and the ashes of an heifer, 
sprinkling the unclean, sanctify the purifying of the flesh. Look at verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, the Holy Ghost, offered himself without spot to God, push your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The same dynamics instigated by the Holy Ghost, praise God. The same dynamics instigated by the Holy Ghost. The same power of God. Nothing new. You can never tell what dynamics can do until it is activated. There are some dimensions of God's power we can never see made manifest until we apply our faith. That same power. Nothing new. God has to reach out. He didn't have to go to anywhere. When God has a problem, who will he go to? <laughs> God had a problem and someone was dead. Now, who, the angel was saying, we will see who we will call. You know when you have a problem, you go to high authority, right? He said, pastor, I have a problem. Apostle, I have a problem. Pope, I have a problem. Now, God had a problem. Who will he go to? The same old dynamics, the same power of God, nothing new. There is no, we can never tell the dimension of what dynamics can do until it's activated. There are some things in your life you have not yet handled or seen because you have not tried and activated dynamics. There are some dimension of God's power, there are some realm, there are some depths of God's power that we have no idea of because we have never tried with faith. We limit God to what we know He can do. What can't God do? The Bible says, "With Him, how many things? All things are possible." So they were, they were rejoicing. We got Him. We got Him. That's what He can do. There's a law in place. He has sin. Not only sin is a sin. Not only is 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 now sin. He must die. He's dead. What will God do? Praise God. The same power of God. A, a dimension that demons and powers that we have never seen before, helped by the Holy Ghost, came into that place, reached out by the arms of God to deliver that man. Praise God. Let's talk about this God's arm. Isaiah 3, verse 1. Quickly. Isaiah 3, verse 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? If you look at this scripture and read the next verse, that question was never answered. David, can you pull the next verse, verse 2? I didn't write it down, but it help me. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. This is the prophecy of Christ in the Old Testament. But let's go back to verse 1. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who? Who is willing to believe? That's God's arms is only revealed to those who are willing to believe. Do not miss. It's made manifest as crutches for as many who are willing to exercise faith. Paul writing, he says, this was also extended to us. It was given to us what as church. Praise God. This power is for us what? It means it's ours. Ephesians 1 verse 19. Who? Who believe? Praise God. He made matter in the resurrection of Lazarus and introduced himself as the resurrection. Praise God. He said, though your brother is dead, if you believe, he can rise again. Church, this same power has been extended to us. As I can talk about the power of God and give you all the definition in Greek and in Hebrew. It's of no use. If we as church cannot conceive in our mind and believe that this is meant for us. David, let me pull Ephesians 119. He has been extended to us, the same power. Do you know how God is embarrassed when all he has done for us, we as his children still go about beggarly, scared of life. Some walk around life rejected and frustrated after all that God has done for us. This is where it is. Christ dying on the cross, even Christmas is of no use. He's dead on the cross, we're of no use. If we as God's children cannot appropriate what he did for us. What joy it is to God when you see his children stand up in faith and put into manifestation dynamics. Praise God. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world condition who believe? To us world. 
this same power I've talked about, this same power that's the, the apex of the power of God made manifest is extended to us who believe God is constrained by our faith. Be it done to you according to your faith. Don't you sit down and tell me God can't do anything. He's, he can do it potentially. There is nothing we can, God can't do potentially. Dynamis is always present. But God expects us to activate it by our believing. Praise God. That's when God's power is made manifest as creatures. God begins to do his own thing. Praise God. I'm going to challenge us here today. There are businessmen in this house. Amen. And I want to start with that. I made this call sometime last year. Some of you here, you know that this business of going to work every day. I was talking to one of our pastors this morning. It's not what God called you to do. You will never have control of your time. Time is wealth. Abby? No. As long as you go into that place of work. I was telling our pastor, next door here is a pharmacy. Well, I left this worker to the CVS and they came to me and said, hey, the man will listen. I mean, this will be convenient for you. You're a pharmacist. You, you can, can answer phone call here. You don't have to stress. I mean, this, I was thinking, but I thought about it for <laughs> I thought about it for a while. I mean, it was a good, the money was good. I could help me take care of myself while I'm doing ministry. I went there some few days. I mean, it wasn't just to help because he, sometimes he travel, just to help. And then he approached me and talked about him. I said, hey, I mean, this is to help you, you know, just next door. I mean, you can come in here for, for break and, you know. But as long as I go in there for four hours, I have to work that four hours. My real wealth is my time. I can do whatever I like with my time. I can run to the auction and buy a car. Somebody can say, come here, I want the title for this guy, I'll run. Can, you, can I leave this place and say, hey, excuse me, I want to go and pick a title for a car. No. There are many in these houses that have been, work, in this house that have been working for people, for company for a long time, and you have to start your business. I've preached this forever since we started this work. God is only creator because he can create no, something from nothing. You don't have to have the money. Are you hearing me? God can make something out of nothing. Dunamis can do it. He's present. You don't have to have the money. But you need the currency of, of the supernatural. It's called faith. What will have happened if those men that broke the roof to come in will say, well, we've tried. Every jump, I guess, well, we can, we, let's just try some other day. That's some move of God you'll never see until faith is in place. That's some move of God you'll never see. There are businessmen and women in this house that have their own business and are working for people. I'll say it because it's true. There are businessmen, captain of industry, in this house, they are working for people and wasting their time. And they tell me, Pastor, I know that I want to do a business. And they have never registered a company. I'm bringing this down to home. Never. As cheap as it is in this country to go and register a company, never. They have never. But they, they are businessmen. I, even if they pay you $100 per hour, which they pay some people or more. As long as you are in that place of work, you are constrained to them. Try in this country. It's not like back and work and work in ministry of work and the work is working. <laughs> Go about your own business. Here, no, you work. That money they'll pay you work for it. There are many businessmen and women. I want to make this call. I'm going to pray. Because this is a very practical thing. Enough of talking too much. Pastor was talking about the power of God when we began to pray. And I know the world, I'm going to think of, think of God's power. You're thinking of healing the sick and healing the, the bad. The same power that healed the sick must heal your pocket in Jesus' name. Amen. Who dare have what it takes to come and call us, call us church rats? But because we have behaved like rats in the church. So I'm not trying to insult you, but I must get to some places. You know what is a rat? He looks for whatever is left. Many doctors in this country are not Americans. They are foreigners. 
check it out. Nurses, pharmacists. But who run those companies? Not us. Because we are looking for leftover. Same principle as poor as church life. You don't say it in church. Church is pray, pray, pray. God will do it. Pray, pray, pray. Go and register your business. And I want to make this extra call. As many of you that will call out today, I have some few minutes left. We will take our time. Uzziah prospered in the land as long as he was in touch with God's man. He manufactured machine has never been done. Discovered things that have never been until pride entered his heart. That's not my, my, my concern. I want to pray. I want us to form that group. I've called some here in that room before, some years back, or last year, or I think before COVID-19. I'm not, please, if you want to work for someone as long as you want, don't join us. Don't. Because I'll be carrying your name and praying before God. There are reasons why some of you should be rich. There are reasons. Because I know that God knows your heart that when you have it, his work will progress. There are reasons. But as long as dynamics might be in the house and the power of God to make you rich, it, but it is God that gives us the power to make wealth. That power might be present in the church, but as long as people in the church will not take the next step of faith, it will still be present to make rich, but they are never rich. Are we here in a safe church? You have quoted that scripture everywhere. It's God that gives us the power, the dynamics. It's there potentially. It's in a state of residence. He was preaching and the power of God was present to heal. But people were not getting healed. Doctors were there. Lawyers were there. Look where we read. Are we together? And I want to pray for the next set of people. Amen. Those of you who want to get married and are ready to buy a wedding gown, I pray for you. I'm not playing. I am not playing. Embarrass yourself. Go and make your wedding gown. Sit it up. Say, hey, what's going on? Say, ah, God, do it. It's my wedding. It's coming. It's coming. I've said this before. Angel is here. Is he here? Okay. I went to their house in Portacos. That's Bishop Sheila's daughter. She's here with us. Took us around. And I went with my wife that time. And Bishop Sheila's one room in their big house in Portacos. I was stories everywhere. I said, ah. Because we knew that Mama back in Dallas was believing God for a child for almost seven years. I said, this is baby's room. I said, like, baby's room. Because we knew, I mean, we came from Dallas. Mama was here. She wasn't pregnant or anything. But today, not one, not two, three. What can God do? But those, who took, those couple took a step of faith and bought those things and put in that room. No baby in place. With doctor support in place. Dunamis was present to give them babies. Do you know that the same power of God that brought you to salvation? You're born again is a byproduct of the resurrection power. It was not meant to stood up from your seat and say, I've been sitting down here as a sinner for a long time. There has to be a change of story. But we limit that power to just salvation. That same power is what makes the Bible say it is He by His stripes we are healed. Until we apply the power, the fullness of the power of resurrection, the power of God to heal will still be present potentially. Do not miss. Are we together? And there still be sick people in the church. That same power is make the, what the Bible says that He can supply all my need according to His riches and glory by Christ. So the same power potentially. Do not miss. Do not miss. Do not miss. And that's the frustration because we're wondering if God can do all this, why is he not doing it for me? We have not employed the fullness of the resurrection power of God. It's not just dynamics, it's more than that. We see Kratos in place, the manifestation of God's power in place, but we wonder how the go between dynamics and Kratos is faith. The Bible said this same power has been extended to us. What it is ours who believe. Who believe. So I'll be praying for those businessmen and those men and women that want to get married and ready to go and make their suit too and make their wedding gown. And last, I'll be praying for those of you who want to have a child who's willing to go and buy toys and embarrass yourself. Let's stand.
This is resurrection power. It's a rising up. I don't know what is dead in your life, but today, this day, God has brought his power to display. Praise God. You can sing and preach and shout and talk and jump about dynamis. What it can do. Yes. God should be saying, yes, I'm God. I'm God. I can handle all that. I'm God. <laughs> I'm God. I'm God. Praise God. If you are here a businessman quickly, you are ready to take this next step of faith. I'll be praying with you. I need that list. I need a list of those that will come out today for business, one by one. Part of the thing I'll be doing in that office is laying before God. But I will not waste my prayer for people who are not ready to act in faith. I'm not here to play church. No. If you are that businessman, some of you might be into it and you're having challenges. Join with me. Join with me. If you're in, in business, you're having challenges, and some of you want to get into business. You don't have to have the money. Dynamics is in place. You don't have to have the money. You don't have to. All I need from you, please. Yes, thank you, Mama. Uh, those names. We will just something to discuss with my wife. We take our time and pray. My father and the Lord have back in Lagos. They call them billionaires club. I said billionaire. And I see some people standing up there. They don't look like billionaires. <laughs> they don't look anywhere like billionaires. Not billionaires. Billionaires club. I don't want to call it a name. Let's step forward. How many people here have not registered any business? Let me see your hand. You have not registered any business. Let's step. Pastor Kramo does it cost to register a business in downtown? Under $20. Pick your name. Pray over that name. Go to downtown. What's the, I'm sure you can get to the office. Go and register that name. Press God. Your time is your wealth. Your time is your time is wealth. Your time is your wealth. It is God that gives us power, potential to make wealth. Praise God. Do you have all these names down? Because I need to be praying for you. I will call meeting once in a while. I won't bother you with too many meetings because you are supposed to be businessmen. You are busy men. I will call this meeting. I said, just let us pray. And I ask you, how, how are we doing? I will pray. I promise you, God, grace. This is important to me too. Because when you are blessed, this world will be blessed. I pray. You came in here. Join this line, right? Please come forward. Thank you, Jesus. Mama, please get the names. Everyone, lift your hand to God. Those of you who have not registered a business, take the step of faith. Want to do it with your wife? Call a name together, register a business. Whether that's all kinds of registration, you want to start a big corporation, an LLC, or even start with so so partnership, start somewhere. Start. Lift those hands to God. Tell him you are the one that gave me the power to make words. I'm not just here to talk about the dynamics of making words. No, no. I'm here to move on to the next dimension of adding energy to this dynamics that there might, there might be a practice made manifest. I will pray. I hope you understand my point. I'm not just here to talk about dynamics. Ah, God, that's what we do in church. God, give me power to make words. Is, the God, is that all? You'll never see that world, even though that power is present, without this step of faith. Be it done to you according to your faith. Lift those hands well to God. There are nurses here that need to start their businesses. Nurses. Nurses. In most cases, there's no harder job like, that can, like a nurse job, especially in America with COVID-19 in place. They can never pay you enough for your service. No. No. I know many testimonies of nurses that were working for people forever and they started their own businesses and they're doing very well today. Nurses. Nurses. Hear me very well. Nurses. Nurses. Oh, they still will harass us, but people are still making. They will still need your service. Why don't you work for yourself? Power of God was present to heal their finances. The same power that can open blind eyes can open blind pockets. <laughs> the power of God was present. Lift those hands to God. Some of you might just say, I don't have what it takes. God will never meet you at the point of the race. It's when you take a step. So go. As they went, they were healed. As they went. Don't sit 
dance. I don't have it. I don't have this. I don't have that. Take a step of faith. God will meet you halfway in Jesus' name. As they went to show themselves to the, to the high priest, as they went, they were healed. As they, what would have happened? They said, no, God. You know, we are, the, the, the high priest won't even allow us to come to his place. As they went, lift those hands to God. I don't know what's your excuses for not starting a business or doing something with your time. I'm trying to address each of those excuses. Lift them above your head. Father, these hands are rest up to you. Let there be a release of your power to make wealth. Not just potentially. Not just potentially. That as they add energy, as they add faith, the same power that rests Christ from the dead shall rest their businesses, shall rest their finances, shall rest their finances in the name of Jesus. The same power. There shall be a manifestation of what we have talked about here. Because your power will never fail. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. If you are believing God for weddings, stay with me. I just want to join, join. We are ready to go and make your gown. It's expensive. We are ready to go and make your gown. Please move forward here. Thank you, Jesus. You are ready to make your gown. Now you might say, well, I might change before then. You shouldn't put on weight. It will be soon in Jesus' name. You are ready to make your... This is... Listen to me. Let me be very... Even if it's not the one you will wear on the day. I don't go and say, we're going to make any house gown. But even if it's not the one you will really wear on that day. But this is a step of faith. You are ready to do it. You spend some good money and put it where you can see when they come to your room. <laughs> Who has this one? Who has this gown? That was the story when we went to Patakot. I said, I don't look at my wife. I said, what? Toys everywhere. No angel then. No other kids. Any other person? They are meant to. They are meant to. Call Brother Edward for me, please. I'm sorry. I have to always harass this guy. Call him, please. Call him last Sunday. David, you're not ready yet, right? <laughs> hey. These guys. Please call him quickly. Quickly. Now God, most of our men here are set to bed. Please, where's Brother Mario? Okay, I hear. Amen. <laughs> Make your suit. No, I'm not playing. Make your suit. Go to the tailor. Say, this is my wedding suit. Praise God. This is my wedding suit. Come. This is April. We have entered the second quarter of this month. No more delay in Jesus' name. No more. Can we stand church? These are men and women exercising prayer. Can we stretch forth your hand towards them? Can we pray? Can we pray? The power of God is present to heal concerning their marriages in the name of Jesus. The power, they have taken a step of faith. Is, they shall be manifest. They shall be cried to make manifest. Are we praying for them? The power of God is present to heal. You're not praying now. You're not praying for them. Pick a mic. Let's pray for them. We join their faith. Lord, this 2022, in this our month, in this our month of resurrection, of anastasis, let it be a rise, a standing up concerning your wedding in the name of Jesus. Let it be a standing up concerning your wedding. Oh, then bless and time for them. Favor them. He that find a wife or husband, find it a good thing and obtain favor from God. As the next step of making their wedding gown, their wedding suit. Yes, my Lord. The power oh, of God to send the marital status for a change of story shall be released unto them, shall be made manifest. We shall celebrate wedding, their wedding, in the name of Jesus. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. I come against every spirit of confusion in the name of Jesus. Wait. Let me pray this prayer very well. Wait, I have some few minutes. God says, I am not the God of confusion. So there's a God of confusion. It's the devil. When you pray under that spirit, there's a spirit of confusion. God says, not me. When you have, you're under that spirit, many people are so disorganized. They don't know when to say yes and when to say no. They start a thing, they start a relationship and it's going somewhere and say, we don't want it anymore. And they enter one, they shouldn't enter. Because there's a spirit of confusion at one. We pray against that spirit concerning your situation in Jesus' name. 
This God is not a God of confusion. He will order your steps or then place and time for you who to meet in the can we pray in the name of Jesus. I break every spirit of confusion surrounding this our children in the name of Jesus. I break the spirit of double mindedness. Every relationship they will not they are not supposed to enter into. They will not enter. They will not enter out of the inspiration in the name of Jesus. Everyone is to, is to say yes to. They will say with confidence, having heard from God. Father, we release them. We release them. As they are back to dynamics, we ask for manifestation. We speak practice. The power of God at work. There's a rising up for them concerning their marriage. There's a rising up. There's a standing up. Concerning their marriages. There's a rising up. Everything called dead. End of the road. Concerning their marriage. I speak life in the name of Jesus. I speak life in the name of Jesus. I speak life. And I break the power of confusion. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The last one, you are believing God for a child or standing for someone. Come quickly. You are ready to buy those toys. You are believing God for a child or standing for someone. And you are ready to buy those toys. Buy children's clothes. Buy children's clothes. Uh, why don't you come for the marriage thing now? Praise God. You are believing God and standing some, for someone for a child. Brother Moran, come. God has settled it. Amen. 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 You've been taking step towards that, right? Amen. Please, can we stretch for the hand and pray for these ones? Hear my preaching. God can do it. God can handle it. But I want you to take a step of faith. That, that, so that there might be manifestation. Can we pray for them? Can we pray for them? Hallelujah. Can we pray for them? Father, thank Father, you. God. Miracle walking. God. Whatever Miracle God has God. begun to do in your life will perfect in the name of Jesus. Can we pray? Can we pray? Yes, my Father. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my all things are possible. Please, not what God can do, but the step you are taking. The power of God was present to heal potentially. Dunamis. The power of God was present to give them a child. Dunamis. But until they added a nature, until they instigated it, Kratos was never made manifest. Lord, they will carry their baby as a manifestation of dunamis in the name of Jesus. Lord, they will carry their babies as a manifestation of dunamis because of their faith. This same power has been given to us, Lord. It's meant for us. It's ours. In the name of Jesus, they will carry their babies. Whoever they are standing with shall carry their babies as they take the step of faith. In the name of Jesus. What can God do? What God can do? What can God do? I speak against every medical report that contradicts your word. I speak against every situation that contradicts your word. Lord, the power of God that is present to you shall visit them. Visit their faith and reward their faith. It shall be done to them according to their faith. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Please, everyone, thank you. Can we stand? I want us to pray for this church. We are going to apply the same principle. Next week, God help us. We'll be looking to more of Paul's writing. Praise God. Resurrection wasn't just about Jesus being raised from the dead. Look at this. When he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. No. What we do in church, we stop at, oh, he's risen. The same power that caused ascension. The same power that made Christ sit in session. I'll talk about this next week. The same power will, is what will bring Christ back to earth. The same power. But we're limited to resurrection. We're limited to he was raised from the dead. No. Look at Paul writing. The same power raised him from the dead and set him at his right hand in heavenly places. Praise God. What God has begun to do in your life is perfect in Jesus' name. I, I, I just don't know where Paul is coming from because he, he gave me the Have you seen a shuttle before? That same diagram you had before? Before they set that thing off from Florida, they ensured that you will return. 
everything is put in place, not just for you to go up, but for you to return safely. The same principle here. So when God began this business of resurrection, he has put things in place that you will return in terms of Christ's second coming. All by the power of resurrection in place. This is what Paul is saying here. We limit it to, oh, he's risen from the dead. But the Bible says the same power set him at his right hand. So it wasn't him raising from the dead, ascension, sitting down in heaven places, and returning all by the same power of resurrection. What God began to do in your life, you perfect in Jesus' name. Amen. But I want us to pray for this church. We can preach about how God can do everything in King's Praise Church, but we must act in faith. Act in faith meaning, are you born again? You need Jesus. If not, the fullness of the God intent for this ministry can never be made manifest. I'm looking for people who are willing to live out their Christian life at the workplace every day. They are looking for opportunities to share Christ. We are asking for that grace also. Even though we can talk about how God can give us mega church. We call ourselves mega church on our WhatsApp page. But without us willing to exercise faith by sharing the same gospel, we'll never see mega. Lift your hand to God. I say it again, God never called me to a small ministry. Some pastors are okay with it, I'm not. But the same power, the same power of resurrection will cause us as a church. He will increase us as a ministry. God will make you an effective minister in the name of Jesus, of this same gospel. Pray for this church. Many shall come to know Jesus. You will be the instigator. Hallelujah. Tell God, order my step every day. Bring me someone that needs Jesus. Let me not live out every day without winning for you. Every day, let me live out winning, looking for who needs to be born again. They don't have to come to this, but you are living yes, out of Christian faith yes, every Lord. day. Yes, Lord. Every day is opportunity to share Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. They are waiting for the manifestation of your sonship. Every you, day, Father. ask for grace. Your grace. Ask for grace, Lord. Your grace to represent Father, we stand you. as one and your we thank you for the power of resurrection. Anywhere we go. We thank you for what in the name of Jesus. you put in the heart of your servant Paul to write to us Hallelujah. today as a church. Thank you, Jehovah. We thank you for the bit of understanding. We ask for more insight into your word. You, Most importantly, you, may we live out this word because it's meant for us as a church. We thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 and covenant partners, if uh, this is your week to uh, pay your tithe, would you rise up? Uh, we want to take that uh, quickly and then I uh, will take the rest of the offerings. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we've been tremendously blessed this morning. I don't know about you, but I have been blessed. Uh, I want us to, uh, to pray for apostle. The Bible says when someone gives you when somebody sows as something spiritual into your life, you have to, at the very minimum, I'm paraphrasing, at the very minimum, bless him with, 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 um, with carnal things, with money. Amen? Amen? So I, I, want us to, I want us to not bless him with money now, but I mean, bless him. Or you can bless him with money if you like. Okay, amen? Amen? But I want us to open our mouths and bless him. Use your mouth to bless him. Tell the Lord to bless him. That is even beyond money. Because every aspect of his life is covered by that blessing. Open your mouth and pray for apostle. If he has blessed you this morning. Faithful Father God, we thank you for your manservant. We thank you, Father, for how you've used him this morning to be a blessing to the church. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for the, the wisdom. We thank you for the intellect that you bestowed upon him. And I thank you, Father God, for allowing the word not just to rest in him, in his inside, but rather for the word, oh Father God, to be willing to come out, oh Father God, and to be spewed unto us and to be the blessing that it is today. Faithful Father God, we thank you. We pray, Father God, that you bless him as he is an instrument, as he continues to be an instrument, a vessel. Father God, I pray, Father God, that he will always remain with. Father God, that because you're willing, he's willing to allow things to be put through him. Father God, you will make him wait, oh Father God. 
faithful father we thank you we bless your holy name for him lord i pray father god as so much has left him this morning lord i pray that you refill him again oh father god set him up oh father god for more things oh father lord we thank you lord we exalt your holy name we bless your holy name we magnify you father god in every aspect of his life we ask oh father god for your touch oh father god in his finances father spiritual life his, his marriage his family life in every respect father god i pray that this same spirit that resurrected jesus christ from dead shall quicken his body shall quicken his finances shall quicken all of his being we bless you jehovah we exalt your holy name in jesus mighty name we pray amen all right uh if uh, this is your week to pay your tithe um i'm sure okay everybody's up so um i want us to understand because uh, the bible tells us that we should bring a whole tithe into the storehouse so that there'll be food in my house and then god urges us he said test me in this and see god urges you to t- to try your faith Test me in this and, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. Just believe, take, take the, receive that message with understanding. Are you willing to obey what God tells you? God says, test me and see. So this morning, I believe that you will test him with your tithe, with your offering this morning. So if you have a tithe, if you, if you have an offering, uh, rise up. And uh, before we take it, uh, praise team, can we have a song? Father God, for these ones that have been obedient to your word. Father God, you urge them to bring a whole tithe into your storehouse. And they have done so. Week in, week out, they do so. And you urge them to test you and see if you will not open the windows of heaven. Father God, I pray because your word is yea and amen. I pray that you will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing unto these ones. So much blessings that they will not have room to store these things. Father God, I pray, Father God, that you will shut the mouth of the devourer for, for their sake. Father God, in whatsoever they touch to do, Father, I pray that you will prosper them. Father God, we are urging them, oh Father, many of them to go out and start a business 
go out and register a business. Father God, as they take this step of faith, Father God, I pray, Father God, that it will prosper in their lives, oh Father God. You will open the doors of heaven and pour out a blessing. Father God, you will amaze them. You will shock them. You will, you will embarrass the naysayers, oh Father, on account of their success. Father God, we thank you. Blessed be your name. And Father God, for the rest of the church that have brought you an offering this day, Father God, as always, Father God, you are not asking for money, oh Father God. Everything comes from you. Every resources come from you. But Father God, you are asking them to set themselves up for your blessings. Father God, they have done so this morning by bringing whatever little they have brought this day. Father God, I pray, Father God, that this will be a springboard to their becoming in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we greatly bless your holy name. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, okay, let's go ahead and pray for this week. <coughs> let's commit this week into the hands of the Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Faithful Father God, we thank you for this yes, week. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Father God, we pray, Father God, yes, that Lord, you bless you. this week. Yes, Lord, Father we God, thank that you will set us, oh Father God, thank you oh for Father, set us up. Miracles. Connect us, oh Father God, with people that Lord, will bless us, oh Father. This week. Lord, we ask, oh Father, Lord, that goodness and mercy shall follow us this week. Daily, you Lord, Lord, we Lord, ask, oh Father God, every that our helpers shall help us and identify us, oh Father God. And they will do us good. Every benefit of this week, Father God, every advertiser, everyone that we need, oh Father God, Make to help us no in weapon our form against us this shall be ours, oh Father. No Lord, weapon we ask, oh Father God, that, 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 that you bless us, oh Father, that you order the steps of every everyone in this place. Father God, I pray, Father, if the enemy shall come in as a flood, Father, even this week you will raise a standard. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you. Father, God, we pray, Father, that you bless everyone in this place, oh Father, that you order the steps of every one in this place. Father, God, we bless everyone in this place, oh Father God. We pray, Father God, God, that your cover shall be over everyone. Father God, they shall leave their homes every morning.